Hanging with Bears, episode 617. We have Coffee Grommets Bear on tonight. It's going to be awesome. This is his first time. Been looking forward to it. Uh, let's just jump right into it. I think uh, Sam Fink was first one in. Tried it. Number two, Sleepy House. Barracut were three and four. Hempcrete. JG Hempcrete, what's going on? Uh, Mr. Witt. Don Pettit's here. All right. Van Dutch. This, Van Dutch, this is the stream, by the way. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you made. <laughs> glad you made it back. We're just gonna jump right into this thing. We were talking about the hat. They were gonna be for sale, but I never put them up for sale. All right. This is Coffee Grounds Bear. Everybody, how's it going? What's happening? Uh, nothing much. Uh, sitting here at the Walmart parking lot. This is where I get adequate service from where i live now so cool this is a place to be for hanging with bears yeah i've been uh i've been known to stream from different parking lots but uh th i'm in my shop right now that's that's where i stream from nice nice yeah i get absolutely no service whatsoever in uh the shop we got now we live up in a in a valley on top of a hill so any kind of cell service you get is just completely wiped out you don't get any of it so cool well this is your first time on it's coffee grounds bear we've been looking forward to this you and i've been talking about it for a while and i'm, I'm really glad you could make it yeah thank you for having me uh, i'd like to start in the beginning uh talk about you know where you were born your family life and uh just give us a, a rundown of your life if you yeah. can yeah sure uh so i was born in new jersey uh i guess i'm alongside with uh jack Go back there. I uh, grew up in <laughs> central New Jersey. Uh, grew up in a little town called Cranberry. Uh, just a cute little colonial town. Goes back to the Revolutionary War. And went to high school at Princeton, New Jersey. And uh, after high school, I moved out here to Tennessee. And that was probably about 10 or 11 years ago. But... <clears throat> I guess uh, kind of what got me to the bear community was uh, my mother showing me George Carlin when I was maybe four or five. And that really opened up my eyes to comedy and the use of uh, language and the comedic process. And uh, from a very, very early age, I was introduced to uh, the same process that, that Owen uses today. And uh, I absolutely fell in love with it. Uh, but well, you skipped over. I was asking you about your family life. You completely skipped it over. Uh, maybe, maybe you, you wanted to skip it over. But if I can get you to go back, the uh, I got. Uh, I have parents that are separated. I got uh, two sisters and a brother. I'm the third of four children. Uh, yeah, yeah, a lot of turmoil there. Uh, a lot of happy moments. A lot of sad moments. Uh, I don't know. Just a, just a child of divorced parents. Uh, dad remarried. Uh, mother did not. But, uh, yeah, well, uh, all my siblings now, we're all pretty much separated. Uh, I think my closest family member is about five or six hours away. But, you know, I got family members in four different states, and it's all just kind of scattered all across the eastern U.S. But uh, Yeah, as long as one of those states isn't confusion, you're good. Yeah, I'd say that's a, a good state to be out of. All right, so do you, do you get along with your whole family still? Yeah, yeah. The uh, My dad, I get along with real well. My mother, uh, it's it's a really complicated relationship. Um, she, she, It's a sad story. It's a really sad story, but she was just the victim of abuse uh, from the time she was born uh, she came from a very very dark family um and it's it's tragic but she never ever really recovered from it and to this day it's just a it's a sad story uh my siblings my brother my oldest brother is uh probably the biggest age difference out of all of us uh we talk here and there uh nothing too crazy uh, my older sister, she's maybe 18 months older than me. We were real close growing up, not just age-wise, but uh, 
you know, we'd probably pick on, pick on each other and get along the most. And, uh, and then I have my littlest sister and, uh, it, she's real special to me. She's, uh, she's a real sweet girl. And I'd say I'm probably closest with my sisters. And then, uh, my brother, not so much, but biggest thing would probably just be because of age. And, you know, when I was still growing up, he had already left the house and moved on to live his own life. Cool. Well, okay. So sorry to make you go back like that. I just, uh, you know, I like to get to know people. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Part of the story. Uh, but so, so you, you got exposed to George Carlin at age five or six, oh, you yeah. say? Yeah, very early. Yeah. I remember seeing him before he had long hair on Ed Sullivan. I mean, that just shows how old I am. You are old, yeah. That's that's a very long time ago. Um, but I also remember, uh, well, I saw him live twice, I think. Oh. Once here in Albuquerque and once in Vegas when I was out there on vacation with my second wife. That's all. Awesome. And uh, I li liked him at the time. I've since gotten pretty uh, jaded about his because i really do think he was still in the system even though he was appearing to be a truth teller yeah. but but not to not to drag it down he was um he was a good comedian yeah yeah i've had similar thoughts uh i still love what i learned from him and i i think it was a great starting point in understanding like the power of comedy but you know, I definitely had to come to terms with um, how he, I think, was like an agent of subversion. And, you know, when I started listening to Jordan Peterson and then eventually Owen, uh, realizing that the reason he had so much turmoil with religion had to most likely be connected to his... Uh, the fact that his father left the family when he was a young kid, like in his book, he wrote that the last time he ever saw his dad was when his mother was clutching him, escaping out of the apartment out of a, a fire escape. And uh, yeah, he definitely had a lot of anger towards his father, which most likely was the engine for his comedy. Uh, once you kind of understand those relationships and uh do you agree with that with that premise that to be a good comedian you have to come from a pretty broken family or I, rough or or hard circumstances? I think the pattern is absolutely there. Um, I, I wouldn't say you must, but it it seems to be the trends. I would say. Yeah. Who were the other comedians that you got into? Okay, so after that, um, I'd say my probably after George, then I discovered Bill Hicks. And he was a, uh, a, a different version of a, a similar stance that uh, George came from. He had a little bit of a different style. Uh, I really got into him probably about 12 years ago. And just like, again, watched all of his specials and really studied what he was doing. And I was fascinated by his art form, uh, read some of his books, and then that led to me uh, discovering Patrice O'Neill and, uh, you know, Louis C.K., obviously, Bill Burr. And uh, then that eventually led me to discovering the Opie and Anthony show. A week before the Opie and Anthony show ended, I was so happy. I was like, finally, because this is when Netflix started going really downhill. And I'm watching, I'm going, like, this is... Like, it's a stand-up show, but it just, it sucks. It doesn't have that, you know, gasoline behind it. It uh, It's missing that it factor. And then I discovered O1A. I'm like, oh, my God, this is that, like, really hard-hitting uh, comedy that, that uh, you know, I've always been attracted to. Uh, I first started hearing about, Opie and Anthony, when they got canceled, like in 98 for the, uh, there was a contest and they had people basically doing lewd acts in a church. Yeah. 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 That was one of their, uh, yeah. One of their stunts way back in the day. I was, a, I was a big fan of uh, some guys out of uh, basically DC 
the the Don and Mike show, and they were kind of at war with Opie and Anthony. Oh, is that right? And they actually got so syndicated that they got moved to New York City right about uh, 2000. So they actually went into, they were like the invaders into the ONA market. So then it really heated up the, the war. Yeah. And those guys went away after a while. Um, but then Albuquerque started syndicating ONA around 2007. Uh, but they were playing it later in the day. They were doing a replay of the morning show. They were on in the morning in New York, weren't they? They were, yeah. Uh, I believe they would do uh, one radio station like WNEW, and then they would do the walkover. Right. Oh, that was for Sirius or something? Yeah, for, for right. Sirius. And so, well, or their walkover. All we got was the radio show. So I was, and I was working construction. So it was something that we would have played on the, on the work radio right so i got exposed to patrice i never really liked louis ck but i loved patrice uh, of course jimmy norton was actually on the show yeah. i thought anthony was a great impressionist and a really quick comedic mind yeah. back then quick he's very quick but so I, yeah I, I was into those guys a, a long time ago and then when uh trump got elected i was all you know back then pro trump and yeah. I subscribed to Compound Media because Gavin McGinnis was on there, and I liked Anthony uh, at the time. So Yeah, yeah, I was actually there uh, for two of the shows. I was in Compound Studio Whoa. Uh, two, three weeks after Trump got elected. That was a, uh, that was a really interesting trip. It was a... Uh, well, Nick DiPaolo yeah. was in studio the night of the election, and they kind of just broadcast all night. They stayed on the air. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that must have been a. I remember watching that. Uh, they had Pat Dixon and yeah, Gavin that night. Uh, right. Yeah, it, it was a. It was an electric night for sure. Yeah. We have a question already. Yeah. When did you start getting into kombucha? That's a kombucha. whole. Kombucha. We'll get back to comedy in a little, little yeah. bit here. Go ahead. <laughs> so, uh, it would have been. In... I would say mid-2020, really right when COVID was kicking off. Um, I Earlier, I was working at a, a sports arena, so pretty quickly I was drinking Coca-Colas all the time. And eventually, uh, I was drinking way too many of them, tried to quit them, and I was shocked at how hard it was to quit soda and how uh, – how addictive it can be. And then tried doing seltzer. Um, eventually, I moved on, started work, working for Whole Foods, and they sold kombucha there, and I tried some. And I was uh, blown away with the flavor of it, and I liked the fizziness and the uh, acidity and the sourness of it. Uh, I did not like paying for it. It's pretty expensive. So eventually, uh, one of the girls at work, she's like, Oh, I make kombucha. You can have a scoby if you want it. I go, yeah. So eventually, I start making my own kombucha. I uh, got eight Grolsch bottles, uh, a big container to start brewing the sweet tea in, and just started experimenting. And I have not turned back since. It's uh, it really helped me quit soda, and it. it I, I feel so good when I drink it, and I have a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun experimenting with different flavors and uh, herbs to put in it. And, it's, and you uh, had a booth of, uh, for it at the festival. I did. I did. I was so busy, I completely missed it. And I, I don't – did we even meet at the festival? So at one point, I, was, I came up to the stage or side stage, and I offered you – I said – because I know you guys were playing music all day nonstop. I'm like, I bet those guys are pretty thirsty. So I walk up to you. I say, I'm like, I know you guys are up here. I'm like, if you want some free kombucha, like I got you guys, I'll hook you guys up. And you said, and you nodded at me. You're like, okay. And then I discovered that peacemaker bear was a exact replica of you. I never talked to you. I talked to peacemaker. <laughs> uh, yeah. I We're going like, to get oh. him a shirt that says I'm not telecaster bear for next year. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I think I think we may have spoken a couple words to each other, but 
yeah, I was so busy at the booth. I was there eight hours a day, the whole festival. And I know you're up on stage. Uh, we didn't really have too much uh, interaction. Yeah, it was, a, it was a busy weekend for especially me and Anchor because we got uh, involved with recording the sound for the special. And that ended up taking probably at least half, half of my focus uh, for, for prepping for that. Oh. We ended up having to buy um, more mics more more cables last minute wow. um yeah so yeah that, i was yeah i was i was pretty backed up but it, it was a magical thing it was it was wonderful yeah it was really cool the i, I definitely got a different perspective on the festival i, I was kind of bummed that you know i was kind of stuck in one spot but uh basically all the bears i got to meet each bear as they came up to the booth right and it was just so interesting meeting people for the first time uh trying to recall like the different conversations i've had over the years uh with these people online i'm like oh yeah i remember you talking to you and uh just seeing the person for the first time uh it, it, it's a lot different when you meet them for the first time in person and uh i kind of find the opposite i i it seems like at least, I don't know, the ones that I could remember from online interactions, it was almost like I already knew them, but uh, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just like, not in the sense of conversation, like, because it is very easy there to slip into conversation, but, uh, you know, just kind of like what the person looks like and what they sound like, just meeting them in person is a lot different than, you know, what you might expect or, you know, what what you think they might look based off of words on a screen, you know? Yeah. Dan Sack, Dan Sack said meeting old friends for the first time. That's a, that's a great slogan. It's, yeah. and it's really true. Trident bear was asking, was saying that, um, Jackal bad is shorter in person. Yeah. He's four eleven, which is shocking, but it's, he's very, very short. Yeah. He was cool. Four eleven with a, with a great tan. He does have a good tan. The, uh, I have the exact opposite of a good tan. I got that pasty white Irish skin for sure. Jackobat comes up to about just about four inches under my chin. <laughs> I'm kidding. He's, uh, you know, he's five, five, seven on a good day. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what he is. I, we'll have to ask him. You know, he'll, he won't come in here so we can talk about it. Uh, yeah, so where was your your booth in relation to like i know where bud bears was and arto survival where were you in, in relationship to all that uh so i was very close to the stage uh the whole vendor area was kind of a u-shape yeah I was the very tip of one of the i was on one of the tail ends of the u uh kind of closer to the stage so uh, basically as you walk in i was the first booth to the left so, okay uh, Cool. When people, I got the first uh, first advertisement to yell out. I got kombucha. Did you uh, get a chance to drink some of the structured water? Yeah, I had a little bit of it. Um, yeah, I had, a, I had a couple of it. I didn't get to, like, try this one and test that one and have all the different ones. I couldn't really taste all the differences that people were explaining, uh, unfortunately. I I was kind of intrigued with, like, oh, I tried uh, Samoan poppy's water, and then I tried water bear bear's water, and it's like it was completely different. And I, right, but uh, I, I just didn't try enough. I had a little, I was really sipping mostly kombucha all weekend. Yeah, I had uh, water bear bear Brian's water the first festival. He came up to me. Uh, behind the stage and said, Hey, you want some structured water? He's so enthusiastic. You got to meet him, right? Oh yeah. He's a, uh, Oh, just, uh, he's got a lot of high energy. It's like, yeah. Talks real fast. And, uh, Hey man, like, you're like, Hey, Whoa, <laughs> I got, what's going on? I got a pretty good chance to talk to him this year. Um, or I'm sorry, 2023, the second year I got to talk to him longer and we had a really cool conversation because he does, um, cell phone tower stuff and my sons are in the fiber industry so uh we got to talk shop about all that stuff it's pretty what, cool does he climb them and 
yeah he's he's got a real specialized um set of skills um setting up radios it's called radios on cell phone towers for um basically you know repeating the signal hmm. i wish i had any knowledge about that stuff i'm so tech illiterate nowadays i haven't been on instagram in three years and i was asking my fiance i'm like how does this work now like i lost all my tech skills uh not really using any, any social media or any any kind of tech stuff I, i'm really just a boomer it's really neat when i come across people that know how to do that there's a bunch of comments about jackal bat in the thing uh oh i had a jackal bat joke oh he looks tall people okay People expect him to be taller, just like they expect uh, Joe Rogan to be taller, because he's larger than life when we see him on our phones or wherever we see him. And he has a big head relative to his body. So that also um, adds to that larger than life thing. Have you ever heard the the um, concept that like news anchors and people on TV have to have big heads relative to their body? I haven't heard that. I haven't. It, uh, it comes across on camera real well uh, to have a big head. Oh, huh. okay. I know when I saw Owen at the festival, I was shocked at the size of his head. It, like, yeah, he's got a very big head. I, was, I just I kept imagining, like, how the hell does he put a hat on? Like, it's huge. It's a huge melon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So did you get to meet him? Yeah, yeah. It was uh, it was really neat. I got to meet him uh, Friday. Friday night at one point I'm sitting in a, a circle under the tent and there's bowler bear and then mama Jean to my left and then Owen standing somewhere and it was just such a cool interaction and uh, we were passing some jokes back and forth and uh, I got to just talk with him a couple moments between uh, Friday and Sunday it was really neat cool uh okay so back let's just take it all the way back um yeah. you were you were into jordan peterson and then when did you find owen how did what what was that whole thing like oh so um i guess the first time i ever saw owen was on the anthony cumia show in 2015. Mm -hmm. yeah uh, uh i i liked his appearance i'm like oh it's some guy that plays the piano um i didn't really remember much of his interview outside of his Caitlyn Jenner joke. I remember it from 2015. Yep. He goes like, I have this math buddy of mine. Like he doesn't try to be funny, but everything he says is hilarious. He goes, Caitlyn Jenner voted woman of the year, but he hasn't been a, uh, hasn't been a whole year yet. And I just thought that is so funny. I'm like, that, that's well, that is a very, um, Norm McDonald like observational. Yeah. And, and the angle of it, uh, to, to be able to poke fun at something that's so obvious, but yeah, it, yeah, it's a very norm approach all the way around. It's great. Yeah, it's a very, because of the attitude towards it is so neutral and you almost have a, the teller is like kind of perplexed. They're like, how does that make sense? Like numerically, it, do, it just doesn't balance out. Uh, so that, I guess that was the first time I came across Owen and then at some point i suppose when the gavin mckinnis show ended that was the show i was watching for a long time and then one way or another i came across owen's uh stuff on youtube and i'm like oh yeah i think i remember this guy and started watching his streams and i immediately uh connected with his breakdown of language and how he would just like parse everything out and try to choose the exact word for every joke. And it was so surgical and how he would uh, intermesh like two abstract ideas and try to pull jokes out of it. And uh, I was like, okay, I'm like this is definitely a guy to pay attention to. It's, you know, I was just so fatigued with, that crap with like Amy Schumer talking about her vagina or uh, like light skinned people talking about like all their problems about being black. And 
just the same monotonous. It's the same jokes over and over. Uh, all of 2016 was uh, Trump sucks, uh, you know, white people bad, and Trump sucks. Right. Uh, right. But yeah, Owen had such a different, uh, a refreshing approach to, you know, breaking down uh, concepts and kind of juxtaposing them against each other. Uh, yeah, you, you're just a very, very creative individual. And yeah, so I started watching watching them and uh it's been probably six or seven years now and it's been a it's been a long journey and he's just a very fun watch i think a lot of the people that came to him around that time were coming from a conservative perspective well would were you considering yourself um conservative and were you conservative all your life uh, uh when i was first introduced to Owen, I would absolutely say I was more of the conservative leaning. Uh, that's really when well, I won't say it just, just to protect my fiance's uh, Instagram account, but the yeah. fraternity Gavin McKinnis started. Uh, I was still very active in that. So, and I was definitely behind Trump uh, 100% of the way. Yeah. Uh, back then. Just the, the memes were so good. It, it was so much fun. Uh, so when I came across Owen, yes. Um, but growing up, I was I was not conservative at all. Uh, you know, as I mentioned earlier, I grew up in Princeton, and that is a very liberal town. And yeah. the majority of the teachers there are very liberal. Uh, but you don't really know it because that's the setting around you right uh, it's just what you that's that's normal life up there and you know george carlin and bill hicks kind of being the guys i listen to you know they're absolutely of the more liberal side uh so i i would say around really who did it for me uh who made me re consider my worldview was Anthony Cumia. Uh, you know, as we yeah. said, he is fiercely quick. Uh, he's a very smart guy. I know him and Owen, unfortunately, have a, uh, a bit of a beef. They don't see eye to eye, but, um, but yeah, he, he's a smart guy. He's a very funny guy. Uh, and he definitely changed my mind on guns. Uh, I'd say like around 2012, 2013, I thought like guns were evil and, uh, you know, Republicans are just, just like obsessed with money and like they don't care about people's rights. And uh, he had a very, very logical, uh, very concise, but also a very funny way to kind of spell all that out, like gun crimes and like the uh, like the, the physics of guns. And it just gave me a better understanding. And then slowly over the course of like a year or two, you know, this notion set in my mind, I'm like, this is I'm like, this whole gun thing is a complete lie. Like everything I've grown up with, my understanding, I said, I'm wrong. I'm like, I'm wrong in this area. Yeah, I was also, cool. I was also a big, uh, I fucking love science fan. And like, I love Neil deGrasse Tyson. Uh, I was definitely in that camp. And I, I would say Kumia was the catalyst where I went. I need, I need to look things over again. And eventually I go, you know, if that's not true, like what else is not true? And I really had to do the real scientific process in my mind of collecting all the data and different viewpoints and uh, really challenging my thinking. So... Cool. So did you jump into Owen quickly when once you really started getting into it? Uh yeah, I quickly became a fan of Owen big time. He yeah, he had the characteristics of a comedian that I, I really like. Uh would we'll point out patterns real quick. Uh he, he uses a uh, language very tactfully and yeah, I got an appreciation for that. He's a very talented guy. 
we've got some crazy comments going um oh sure this one's this one's just dumb but i want to read it sam fink said to Seacow, who's shipped out a lot of packages today he's doing all the the bear merch uh sam fink said you should have sent some invisaligns over to the uk their teeth are jacked that's that's out of left field and i just thought it was funny I don't care. moon king wrote the longest joke in the chat i can't read it uh trident bear wrote a novel uh, uh and then see cow bear asked if you were part of the libertarian to bear pipeline i just like i like the i like the pipeline reference that's the funny. school to prison pipeline is where that started i'm pretty sure it's funny yeah so oh uh, yeah I don't know if anybody said you were libertarian. Okay, we got more questions. Sleepy House said, "Are you familiar with the band Camp C A A M P? Because you resemble the lead singer." Uh, I I am not. I've never heard of them. Sadly. Yeah, you're not in the camp. Camp. Uh, not. To Bandit Bear wants to know what are the benefits of kombucha. Uh, uh me personally, uh, it makes me feel way better uh pretty much the first time i had a sip of it almost uh similar to when you drink whiskey or beer you kind of have that wave of relaxation go over you like you kind of feel it moving through you i felt right. that with, i felt that with kombucha and i was like whoa and like i felt it go down my arms after drinking i go this is I'm like what kind of drink is this again and uh yeah, I felt alleviated, but it doesn't have a whole lot of alcohol in it, which is the thing. I asked, I'm like, how much alcohol is in this? And they said, like, less than 1%. I'm like, wow, okay. Uh, it is loaded with uh, very beneficial acids for your stomach and a lot of the components that help uh, digestion. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's basically like a, a health drink. Cool. I'm typing. I'm typing to see cow. Can you see the comments? Uh, yes. The uh, it scrolls and it disappears very quickly though, so I catch them for a short period of time. Yeah. Does kombucha get stronger the longer it ferments? Asked Sam Fink. It does. Uh, so the scoby, the culture that you put into the sweet tea to turn it into kombucha, it feeds off the sugars of the sweet tea. Uh, and as it brews, it also becomes much more acidic and sharp tasting. So, um, at, at some point you got to kind of balance it. Uh, it, it gets stronger in flavor. Uh, yeah. So like, I'll do like a week and a half to three week brew. And that's about where I keep it. Uh, does he mean stronger in terms of alcohol or just? I don't know. He'll, let's get him to uh, clarify. Okay. Uh, okay. Trident Bear wants to know, did you ever have a problem with alcohol or cleansing yourself from alcohol? And did kombucha help your gut biome returning? Uh, I never did have a problem with alcohol, thankfully. Yeah, despite it being in the, the family, that's, uh, I'm glad I, I dodged that bullet. Poor Bear said, I'm going to quote this exactly, but then, and then I'll I'll correct it with what I think he meant to say. Are there in kombucha that tastes good? I think he was asking, are there any that taste good? I, I know mine tastes good. Uh, I really like the flavors I make. I like I like, the, uh, I like I like kombucha. Yeah, I don't drink it very much, but there's definitely. Uh, I understand why people don't like it. It's a very strong uh, drink, especially the longer you do brew it, it does get much more sharp and sour. Right. And it's just not everyone's cup of tea. And so, uh, you know, I'll give out free samples before someone commits to a, you know, a cup of it. I like, just want to make sure they, you know, can stomach it, the flavor. Right. But, you know, it's either, it's one of those drinks where you either hate it, can't stand it, or you love it. And I just so happen to love it. Sam Fink clarified his question. He said, I meant stronger in whatever you were just explaining with that feeling. Oh, um, I would, I would say so. I would say the, uh, yeah, my stronger kombuchas, the ones that I brew longer, uh, 
you do feel it in your stomach. I would say a little bit more. Yeah. But it's not a, uh, it's not crazy noticeable, but. We're getting all kinds of opinions in the chat. Some people love it. Some people hate it. Some uh, small but wise mama doesn't like it, but her husband loves it. Yeah. It, it's kind of like sushi or like IPAs. It's you got two camps. Right. Seacow uh, says it's pretty lit. Wobbly says, I like it homebrew or small batch, but the ones from the store suck. Yeah, I need to try some more homebrew type. Uh, if you guys see me at the festival again next year, I have a blueberry lavender that almost always wins over the anti-kombucha people. It's It has a high success rate for uh, people, people liking it. Cool. And I'm very happy with that one. That's nice. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to to start a new tradition on hanging with bears i'm going to uh, pin anybody's comment that has typos i, I don't know if you heard but i'm uh, i'm kind of a grammar nazi i think people should proofread their shit before they hit send i i agree with that it's it drives me the biggest thing that drives me nuts is the dollar sign they put it on the back end of the numerals so people write 20 and then dollar signs you know who used to uh rail about that was gavin have you heard him gavin also shares your opinion yeah yeah he does uh i haven't listened to him in a few really since the owen situation uh yeah i just couldn't really look at that guy the same but uh yeah i have heard he, he has the same uh opinion now we've got people just doing it for the hell of it <laughs> oh. uh, you got a lot of pinning to do, Joe. That's fine. Uh, oh, I'm losing my trains of thought. Oh, Kano Bear's here. He's got a new song out. I just want to plug his song. Um, it is actually 38 minutes past the hour. We have a sponsor on Hang With Bears tonight. It is Kano Bear with his brand new song. This one's for the bears. So you go to um, Matt Callendine, C-A-L-E-N-D-I-N-E, -E, Matt Callendine at Bandcamp. And, uh, you know, give him a tip. You can do PayPal, whatever. And if you do the tip put the dollar sign after no whatever um i sent him 10 bucks it's a really cool song i think he was inspired after the festival he put on a great performance on sunday morning at the festival oh, okay and uh yeah i was wishing it was like at a different time of day we kind of were doing our acoustic and, and solo acts earlier in the day and uh yeah i hope Hope to uh, feature him when there are more people in the tent next year. He's, he's definitely earned it. MJ Corum's here. All right. I think we're going to have Hanging with the Bears uh, retitled with a dollar sign on the, the end of Bears pretty soon. Say, at this rate. again? At this rate, I'm pretty sure they're going to uh, correct the, the Hanging with Bears title with a dollar sign on the end of Bears. <laughs> yeah, we, we should do that. For 2024, a special, you know, thing. We got another question. Could you make a sp <laughs> could you make a special box wine flavored kombucha for Jackal Bat so he can kick the hooch habit? Uh, <laughs> That's from Mr. Wit. He's got a wit on him. Yeah, he's uh. I was hanging out with him a lot during the festival. I I suppose I could take a stab at it. I did just get a a few gallons of muscadines from. Uh, my fiance's grandmother. So cool. I suppose that'll be between Jacobad and I. Yeah, he's taking a lot of heat for that. I, yeah. I hope, I hope he isn't taking it to heart too much. He's uh, I, I think he's a lovable character within the bear community. He uh, he's the fodder for a lot of really funny jokes. Yeah. Uh. Mr. Witt is asking, when did you start getting into kombucha? You kind of answered that earlier, but go ahead. Yeah, uh, 2020, uh, I was trying to uh, get off a drink and soda and uh, tried this thing and that thing and eventually discovered kombucha, and I was immediately attracted to it. I thought, like, I really want to be drinking this all the time. I loved it, uh, especially with the health benefits for you, too. And so instead of buying it, because it can get on the expensive end, I started making it myself. And 
at uh, I started out with uh, eight liter bottles that can hold pressure for those Grolsch bottles with the little gasket on top. And now right. I have I have a capacity for 20 gallons now. So it's been some growth over the course of, uh, I guess, four years now. Now, just get into typing in the chat. I, I, we kind of glossed over. Okay, so when did you become like a real regular? Were you, were you around in the YouTube days before he got banned in 2019? Oh, yeah, big time. Yeah, I, I thought I, I remember. I, you've been around. I remember uh, interacting with you back in 2019 on the YouTube uh, chats. Oh, really? Okay. The uh, it, It's hard to remember, honestly. There's been so many people in and out. Uh but yeah, I, I think I first caught Owen stream in 2017. So it's, it's been some time now. Uh, I know I was in a year or two before the, the infamous white claw days. Yeah. Cool. Has your name always been coffee grounds bear? I think it has. It has been. Yeah. And that's a, that's another thing I need to clear up. Okay. Uh, Throughout the whole festival, uh, people would walk up to the kombucha tent and they go, oh, coffee grounds there. I'm like, yeah. They go, where can I buy your coffee? <laughs> and I said, I <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I don't sell coffee. They're like, oh, okay. And they're confused and rightfully so. I chose the name before any of the coffee wars started or anyone started sponsoring coffee. Uh I, I think Bear Pelagic was still walking around by the time I chose my name. <laughs> so that, that's not true, but that's <laughs> funny. It goes back pretty far, uh, but it it has to do with uh, the comedic process, and it's kind of like an ode to that. Uh, I always kind of liken the comedic process to uh, the similar process you go through making coffee. Uh, because a lot of comedy can come from trauma. And so basically you start out with a bean and then you send it through this torturous uh, process of you, you pick it and then you, you roast it. You just, you know, you bake it with all this heat and then you grind it up and pulverize it. And, you know, you, you steam it and... You know, you blast a bunch of hot water in it, and on the other end, you get this really, like, silky smooth uh, drink that's stimulating and refreshing. It, it kind of wakens up your brain. Uh, I've always kind of considered the comedic process similar to that, where it's almost like the rumple stiltskin machine, where you're able to take this dead hay uh, and you send it through this machine, this process, and it, you know, it weaves it into golden thread. And, uh, I think it's just a beautiful, uh, process. It's, it's by far my favorite art form, like I mentioned before. And, uh, yeah, yeah so that's, that's where the name comes from. Cool. So you, you survived all the, switch over to all of the changeovers to the D live era and then beyond that. Yeah. Yeah. I did. It's been, uh, it definitely with, uh, the whole cancel culture and, you know, canceling of comedians, I would say, Oh, absolutely. The hardest to keep track of and had to download the most apps for him, but it's, uh, yeah, I enjoy listening to his comedy. Uh, what's this now? Oh, we had a we had a fill in host for a second. I got sick of my face. Oh, okay. So you you sound like you're really into the into the almost like the math or the formula or the science of comedy. Like, can you can you outline? some of the mechanics for people that maybe haven't studied as, as much as you have? Uh, sure. Yeah, I can do my best. The, um, well, I think it's, 
it's the thing about it. It's a very elusive, uh, it has a really elusive nature to it. It's almost as if uh, sometimes I try not to, I don't want to figure out the entire process and like each little thing. Uh, I, I think about it constantly. I'm almost like, I'm afraid if I think about it too much, then it'll kind of like ruin the magic of it. Uh, but it, it certainly, I, I really am mystified by it. Um, but it almost has a similar nature to electricity where you need one positive charge and one negative charge and you have to interact. And then that light that comes out, that's where you usually get the laugh. Uh, but a lot of times it's, it's like the telling of a story or you have a uh, two agents come in and you expect one outcome to go one way. And, uh, by the punchline, you're given a new pathway, like a new thought, a new, uh, opportunity. And like, you have a new pathway formed in your brain. You, you go like, Oh, okay. I see. Uh, how that can make sense. Uh, that, that is something I'm definitely mystified by and I'm just fascinated by it. Uh, the other thing about it that I like studying is the linguistic properties of it and, uh, like the different levels of how you can use interpretation or I guess in like Coddington's case, uh, like double entendre for puns. A lot of times yeah. I be the catalyst for, um, how, how would I describe it? Like you can kind of weave your way in and out of like phrasing and, uh, how to deliver a message to a person. And, uh, English is definitely a language where that makes that possible just because it does contain so many different double entendre entendres and like the use of inflection and you know different words can your similar words can have two different meanings is a leverage point with a lot of uh the structuring of, of jokes double entendres like always remind me of being a bus boy at age 17 and working with older waitresses you know sometimes in their 20s and 30s and uh you know the double entendres were almost always sexual back you know at that in that at that time and they were they were corny because everybody had already heard them but for you know some jokes are so good they can i don't know it was of a time but some jokes are so good they they always hit every time you hear them yeah yeah i have a uh i have an absolute love for them and nothing nothing feels better than laughing it's laughter is one of those things that separates us from the animals i think it's a it's a truly divine quality of life but i think that i think some of them have a sense of humor though animals yeah like uh like monkeys and dolphins well we have an african gray parrot and i think i, I think there's something I think they pick up humor from humans. I mean, a lot of birds that, that do mimicry of human so or sounds uh, end up actually kind of absorbing the context of humor and then mimicking that as well. Does that make any sense? Yeah. Yeah. They uh, sometimes they can seem to uh, understand the timing of introducing certain elements, whether it's like a click or like a movement of the eyes. Uh, where you you kind of look at them, you're like, did they mean to do that? Because that was very funny. Yeah, I th think I've I've known some dogs that really seem to have a sense of humor. Yeah, it's hard to it's hard to explain. And maybe it's a timing thing, or I don't know. They they just or or uh, per, you know like persistence when they're being told no. The way they I don't know. I think a lot of dogs are kind of funny. I don't yeah, know. that's that's. That's the one thing about like humor. It's so hard to put in it, <clears throat> put an exact definition on it and really fit it in one box. It's hard to describe exactly like every little factor that goes in it. 
Uh, Poor Bear has I, heard that hyenas laugh, too. <laughs> That's a dumb joke. Did you ever get into Corolla back in the day? Adam Corolla? Yeah. No, I didn't. He has um he has a really good joke formula. He's got a really quick mind too. Uh he's really good at setting up, you know, I think a lot of what you were talking about is where when a joke there always has to be something of a twist or a surprise at the end that kind of like is a little bit of a jolt. But there's also sometimes when it's unexpected but still familiar, that can be real satisfying. And there was something um, really good about the way Corolla would write jokes in the moment. You kind of knew he would be choosing from a certain roster of words or premises for the ending, but it was always still a satisfying surprise, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Carlin said, he goes, in every single joke there always has to be an exaggeration whether ah. it's a huge exaggeration or it's a little bit of a more uh localized a one minute factor but every single joke one element that's introduced in the premise has to be exaggerated and um of course it has to be obvious to the the viewer you know the audience that's that's what's so interesting about uh, like humor itself, and I guess where Owen comes into play is it's almost a form of a lie. Right. It's, it it has the same format and same uh, structure and blueprint of what Owen talks about with wizardry, where uh, what you're saying, like there is going to be a little lie in there, but well, yeah. The the setup to the joke has to take the listener on some kind of a journey into the world of that joke. You have to actually, and so it, by its nature, it has to be um, fantasy or, you know. Yeah. And it, but the viewer knows it too. It's presented to uh, the viewer and it's almost a peek behind the curtain, like the wizard's curtain. It's like, Hey, here's how this trick works. Um, because if, you know, the person doesn't see the trick or like the twist that you talk about, uh, then they don't laugh. And, you know, in the age of political correctness and, uh, you know, trying to ban everything or when what we saw with COVID, just like all the news media lying, I, th I think a person like Owen, who is able to show you behind like the wizard's curtain, like here's this format here's how you're going to be able to see through you know some of the lies and some of the traps that are set before you um it helps give you a better uh compass to operate out of that the whiskey was sorry the, the whiskey whistling bear commented norm once said the best punchline is the same as the first line yeah i've read those the uh and that harkens back to what i was talking about the uh how a lot of comedy pivots on the use of double entendre or a word or sentence having two meanings. It's, it's fascinating that you can have like the exact same sentence and have two totally different meanings. Like I'm sure you saw the, uh, the yippee joke that Norm did. Uh, it was no, I remind me uh, maybe. Oh, it's a uh, it's a joke that he did on SNL. It's a perfect representation of uh, what I believe Whiskey Whistling was talking about. He said, uh, I don't, I don't know what a yippie is, but it, it's apparently a, some kind of group of a person, like a hippie. Maybe it's oh, a, yippies, yeah. There was, yeah, it was like the the, the term was first um, starting to show up around 68 or 69. Okay. It was like somebody who was sort of a hippie, but they still wanted to kind of stay in mainstream culture. That was the original okay. premise like a yup, of it. Like a hippie yuppie? No, it wasn't yuppies. It was, there was a, you know, hippies were considered to be long haired, you know, dirty, smelly. They want to give everyone a flower. They're into anti-war. Yeah. You know, 67, 68. 
And then they quickly coined the term yippie, which was kind of like someone who aligned themselves with the with the hippie ethos, but they weren't they still kind of dressed and looked sort of normal. Oh, okay. Well, the joke was uh you know, he's doing weekend update and the person he was reporting on, let's call him uh uh Chris Smith. And he goes like, Yippee! Chris Smith has died at the age of fifty in his home in uh, Arlington, Virginia. And he goes, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's Yippee. Uh Chris Smith has died. He goes, That was a so he Used the double meaning of yippee as an uh, expression for happiness. Like, hooray, this fella's dead. Right. And he goes, like, I'm sorry. Like, I read it wrong. And, you, you know, you see the twinkle in his eye. And like, Well, in the, in the 90s when he was hosting SNL, that was already an outdated reference. But there were still, you know, half the audience that would have gotten it. Now we're having to explain the whole damn thing. Yeah. I mean, I, I didn't know what a yippee was until you explained it. But I understood... Uh, I at least understood, you know, what he was getting at using a clues of con. You knew it was. You knew there was another meaning for it that was some kind of reference to a type of person. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, that that would be a instance from what uh, Norm was describing. One of his own jokes, where he said, "Like yippee, this guy's dead." He goes, "Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, this yippee, he he died." <laughs> right. Yeah, that's yeah. That's a funny joke. Same and as the setup. I. I think there was something that Norm did when he was saying that the perfect punchline is the same as the first line. I think he even took it one step further. He was so conceptual. I think he took it one step further and was talking about how he would love to write the perfect, maybe, well, okay, I, I get it. It was, it was the same thing that Whiskey Whistling Bear said, whatever his whistling guy. Uh, he's saying, uh, the perfect joke is basically the punchline is the whole joke. Like there's nothing in between. I think he even took it one step further and was conce conceiving the perfect joke that that was just one line. Hmm. I wouldn't know. I don't know. I can't think of, you mean like the punchline is a whole joke? Like just a punchline? Yeah. I I think he wanted to try it was like sort of um existentialism or something uh just trying to strip it down to its pure essence like what if you could write a joke that was so great that the punchline was the first line and there was nothing else sea level is is sort of remembering i'm really screwing it up and that's that's something i'm pretty good at <laughs> The uh, I, it, I I've I've never written a joke where the it, it, it'd be very hard to it'd be very hard to do that. I think it's it it take a lot of talent to write a joke like that. All right, I thought I explained it. I don't know when Tried and Bear asked this question, but I have to address it. Yuppies, yippies, and he said not the same. Yuppies was a term, I described what a yippie was. It came along in about 1968 and, the, and it really only lasted till about 72. Yuppies came along in the early eighties and it was young urban professionals, YUP. And it was people that were wearing Ralph Lauren polo in the early eighties, you know, Gucci, Ralph Lauren polo, you know, polo shirts and all that. There was, there was this whole kind of um, materialism that cropped up in the early eighties that lasted quite a while. And that's what the uppies were. Yeah. Get us together. Try it in there. Seventies and eighties. Welcome to hanging with bears where we explain different terminology from different decades because I was at a lot of decades. Well, that's why you're so useful to the bear community, Joe. You help, uh, Bring us back in time and explain a lot of the premises that we have no idea about. Yeah, you know, and people really <laughs> don't care. But I, I'm just going to go along just for the 2% that really give a shit. <laughs> I don't see as his 1920s encyclopedia when we got Joe Gagan in the bear community. I have actually referenced – that's funny you bring that up because – I found a book in a thrift store from 1912 called 
the Book of Wonders. And it's basically a one volume encyclopedia. It's about that thick. And I've actually live streamed on Instagram where I'll just randomly open a page and start reading what it says because they were basically just kind of making shit up. It was hilarious. And, you know, how, they were trying to explain scientific principles and engineering and, you know, all the, they were trying, it was supposed to be just kind of a guide for people to, kids or whatever, to learn about all kinds of different stuff. And the stuff about the phone systems back then was really fascinating because they did have good info on the phone systems. It was already very advanced by 1911. It's pretty interesting. Oh, cool. Whiskey Whistling Bear wants to know what the Civil War smelled like. That's a that's a funny question. I'm not, <laughs> not even I'm not even gonna address it. So do you, do you have so do you have a joke you've written that you want to tell the people? Uh, most I, I've written down jokes. Uh, a lot of them are kind of mean. Honestly, one of my jokes was so close to getting into Owen's special in 2019. Uh, he kept referencing it, and I was so excited. I I took that as a a very good sign of uh, you know, like okay. That's got legs. That's a, you know, that's a sign. It's a good joke. Um, sadly, I, he got this, this notion in his head. He goes, I want to do a kids friendly audience. And he goes like, and so my joke was struck in uh, from his set list. But the, uh, you remember his, uh, were you there for that skit that he had about the Chinaman and the Jew? Yeah. And, it's a juxtaposition between the two cultures of Chinese culture where they're very like, uh, like literal and serious and they, uh, just take everything very literally and, uh, Jewish people just using nothing but sarcasm and passive aggressiveness in their speech and them not being able to understand each other because they're, they have basically two different languages they're talking. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I, I took that and I told Owen, you could do a second, uh, like, edition of this same uh, joke premise, but you do the Jew and the Nazi. And so basically, let's say you have uh, the Jewish person in the camp, and he's going like, oh, this is so great. I really love it here. And But the Nazi is so, like, literal and precise and just so, like, order-oriented. He just goes, oh, he thinks this is great. He goes, like, I wish I could have some more of this. He goes, like, rip me away from my family while you're at it. Like, I'm loving this. He goes, oh, okay. He goes, like, take my possessions, too. Uh, and then it just goes on and on. And, like, each uh, scenario that uh, happens within the Holocaust, it's basically because the Nazi soldier, the guard, doesn't understand the sarcasm because they're so literal. Uh, but most of, I don't know, I just, just, like, uh, the stuff I like to joke about is more, like, uh, in conversational, uh, kind of like with the Opie and Anthony show, you know how, uh, like, Jimmy and Anthony would, uh, you know, kind of go after one another, and it's kind of as it arises, uh, I like the timing of that more, if I can find it, um, I got to I have to look back in some of my notebooks, though. I, I have some written down, but it's been a long time since uh, I've written, like, a on-paper beginning, middle, uh, end joke. Right. Okay, well, I didn't mean to put you on the spot. Sorry about that. Oh, I'm, I don't – yeah. Flocal asked a question a long time ago. Can he buy a keg of kombucha from you before the festival? Maybe pick it up from you. I don't know if he's saying pick it up at the festival or what. Well – yeah, I wouldn't say a keg. That's a pretty serious apparatus. Uh, what I'm thinking about doing is selling kombucha by the growler. So like a, maybe a gallon or a few pints in a glass container. Uh, I'm thinking about getting into that. That would be the next gradual step up with uh, my kombucha production and, you know, selling it. Uh so the 
thing with growlers, though, I don't believe they do a lot of like small order uh, growlers. Usually, when you buy growlers, you have to buy some like a hundred or like five hundred of them. So uh. it's a bit of a investment. Uh, but I would love to have, have just like a nice growler with the Happy Bear Kombucha logo on it. Uh, it's there's a lot, lot of aspects about the growler that I like, and uh, my goal is to by the festival have growlers available for the bears. Cool. I just had an idea since uh, we're on this topic of jokes, and some people are posting some jokes in the in the chat. Yeah, do you want to have a an impromptu joke contest? Uh, yeah, I'll give him my best shot. So you're going to be the – I'm going to read them. You're going to have to kind of keep track of them in your head, and then you, you're going to pick a winner. And uh, whoever wins gets a, a non-compliant hat. I'll, I'll even cover the postage. All right. So uh, everybody start – oh, and, they, you know, they got to be short enough that I can read them, but um, – these are these, everybody put your jokes in the chat and you see if you can win. Are these original jokes or ones they found uh, in a joke book? There's no, there are no rules. Okay. Yeah, there are no rules except uh, if it's if it's gross, I'm not going to read it. Okay. I so there's I don't know if I told you or you might have heard this or maybe not. Uh, I have this belief that at my age nobody wants to hear uh, dirty jokes from an old guy. So I I decided years ago in the bear community just not to not to be gross or sexual in jokes. Yeah, I find like it. The older I get, the less like impressed I am with them. It's uh just like an easy grab, and I don't know. So sometimes one will get me, but you know after some time you just stop being wowed by. You know, very dirty folks. Okay, we uh, Corberly. Uh, that she's uh, combined both of her names because she's Corbear and now she's Corberly. I think she's trying to let everybody know that that she's still that that she was barely and she's been around forever and now she's Corbear. Uh, a Christian, a Muslim, and a Jew run into a bar and all three are knocked out cold. <laughs> Maybe I don't get jokes. Uh, 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 <laughs> joke that they ran into the, like the wall. Oh, they ran into. Okay, yeah, thank you. I I need those explained to me because I only I only process. Well, no, that's funny. That was a funny joke. Okay. Whiskey whistling bear says, "What's the difference between a chickpea and a garbanzo bean?" Do I respond? Do I say what's that? Uh, okay, I don't. I don't know. That's that's a good one. I guess we'll have to get the answer later. I can't. I maybe my brain's not working today. Maybe we gotta guess the punchline. Where? Yeah. Why are there only two hundred thirty-nine beans in Irish chili? Two hundred thirty. I guess people are putting their punchlines later. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> so far, the uh, the first joke is winning. Okay. Sam Fink wants to know if there's, there's a, a spinner on top. Why do these hats look short? Because I have a small head. I don't know. Uh, okay. Okay. Some people are going to finish up their jokes later. I don't know. What's white, gray, and Reed standing up? Joe. Okay. Joe? That's that's a – I don't get the garbanzo bean thing. Uh do we have a beaner bear in the chat? Oh, okay. The punchline of the garbanzo is, I never had a chickpea all over my face. <laughs> Poor bear said, Joe is a deeply closeted gay man. Well, that's You stole that joke, and it's funny, but it's, yeah, it's funny. Uh, it's not true, but it's funny. Uh, Hey, I, I got a question for the chat. The, the jokes aren't coming as fast as I thought, but we can have a couple topics going at once. How many of you people think that Norm was really admitting he was gay in his autobiography when he said that? Oh, did you read, uh, what was it called? What was the name of his book? Oh, I forget the name of it. I did not read it, but I heard it, 
um, read aloud. Um, I, I heard it. Because was he unmarried? He never had a wife, did he? No. No, he had a he had a kid. He had a son. Uh, he was married briefly, and when he got divorced, he got custody of his son, Dylan. Huh. He never talked about his wife very much he did a good job of keeping his marriage out of the out of the press yeah he was a he was a very individual you know sea level thinks he might have been queer i heard a rumor that he traveled with a young uh fey uh assistant when he was later in life or a, a young guy that was his one man entourage um, so I, I heard rumors from podcasters. I think Jay Moore used to talk about that. Oh, huh. I never heard that. Okay. Okay. Keep the jokes coming. I didn't mean to stop the jokes. Maybe it, nobody's got any jokes. Go get your joke books, people. Do you think we could write a joke, have them introduce elements and we try to figure something out? Uh, yeah, I see. <laughs> I'm kind of blanking on premises right now. Well, have the uh, well, I'm not the host. Huh? Sam Fink says, I ordered a chicken and an egg from Amazon. I'll let you know. That's pretty funny. I have a good joke, Gaggin's chin. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's been well. That's been a, a non—I mean, a non-stop joke since I shaved my beard off. What did you call the balloon whose daughter, the balloon whose got whose daughter got taken? He Liam. What do you call the balloon whose daughter got taken? He Liam. Like Liam Neeson. Yeah, I, I oh. got it. Oh, here's a joke. Oh, yeah, I just remembered one joke I thought of right before the festival. Um, where does uh, it, it's pretty simple. I think Cod would appreciate it, but uh, where is Joe Rogan's favorite place to go swimming? I don't know. The wharf. The what? The wharf, like you go swimming in a wharf. Okay. But at the same time, you say dwarf because he's a midget. Do oh, do do dwarf. Yeah, you have to. That's all in the. That's all in the pronunciation. Yeah, it, it's uh, you kind of you got to stick the landing on the pronunciation with that one. Yeah. Well, you try again on somebody else's podcast. Uh, okay. <laughs> Candor Bear just got here. Uh, Candor, we're having a joke contest. Uh, the winner wins one of these hats. Um, and, uh, coffee grounds bear is the, is the arbitrator. We have a few jokes. Let me see if I can go back. Trident bear says, how can you tell the difference between a Catholic and a Mormon, a Catholic cross themselves, a Mormon pulls down their underwear from their legs. I don't get it. I, don't, I think it's just a really bad joke. I, maybe he made that one up. I don't know if you if you wrote that joke, Trident, um, you can admit it or tell us where you got it. I think Whiskey I like the, Whistling uh... Bear says, have you heard about the Muslims? Assimilukalakam a lot. I'm not pronouncing that right. Assalumalikam a lot. Yeah, I think it's like there's something about like them a lot at the end. This like guy him. says a guy I like walks him. into I like, a bar. I like him a lot. Okay, says, yeah. Hey, Gaggin. Joe, I think I'm, a lot I'm of these behind. Hold on. jokes at your expense. Yeah, it's, it's always open season on me. That's fine. Why does Irish chili only have 239 beans in it? Because then it would be too farty. Too farty. It would be too farty. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's funny. That's like the... 2.30 joke with the dentist. I missed something from the bandit. He wrote Dump Star by itself. I don't know what that 
Let me go back and see what the bandit's talking about. Oh, I don't know, dumpster pumping or something. I don't know, something. Now, Kender Bear is a professional comedian. He went to comedy school. Oh, Sea Cow said a thimble for the uh, where you would go swimming. That's pretty funny. Rogan would swim in a thimble. I like the wharf better. It has two meanings. Yeah, that was cool. Waiter walks up, uh, DSAC, Dan Sack says, um, waiter walks up to a table of six Jewish women <laughs> and asks him, is, is anything okay? <laughs> okay, I got to read that again. Sorry. <laughs> you're never supposed to break when you're reading a joke. Waiter walks up to a table of six Jewish women and asks them, is anything okay? <laughs> <laughs> that one might win. That... <laughs> <laughs> That one's good. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. A gay guy walks into a bar. <laughs> <in the bar. laughs> a gay guy walks into a bar, and the bartender says, Hey, Gagan. <laughs> I don't know why he was talking to me not instead of the guy that just showed up, but whatever. Um, what did the one ocean say to the other? Nothing. It just waved. That's not a, like a kid's joke book. I, I like it because it's innocent. I like them a lot. Whiskey. Okay. Everybody's re explaining their punchlines. That's good. Trident Bear says, a person asks Cesar Milan, how do you talk to the animals? He says, I rehabilitate them. They said, say again. He says, I really uh, beat them. I got a Man, mean I one. I don't know. Uh -oh, I got a mean one. said Van Dutch wins. One That's I thought about. Sea Cow, I, might, I, I think I'm going to just toss Sea Cow. No, I'm not going to ban Sea Cow. If you keep it up, Sea Cow, he's on a roll. First he pissed off Owen, now he's pissed me off. But I think I should toss Van Dutch and Sea Cow. Did Van Dutch don't... have the uh, the waiter one? No, that was Dan Sack. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I had one, one I thought of uh, a few years ago. It's... Uh... What do you call hot dogs you cook in the oven? I don't know. And Frank's. <laughs> Isn't that terrible? That's terrible. That's a ter terrible joke. Uh, Dan Sack said that's not his joke. Yeah, I, well, I said there were no rules. So uh, Sam Fink says, how does a black girl? Oh, I can't. There's no I rules. No, just anybody wants to read Sam Fink's one. I can't read it out loud. There's no rules except no jokes against Joe Gag. No, no, that's no. I'll take all. I'll take all. All of it. But I got your back, Joe. I got. I you. know, but I can't read uh, gross ones if they're if they're sexually gross or if they're just gross. I understand. Uh, uh, sea level says grungy. We are trying to see if animals have a sense of humor. So tell us a joke, and we can find out. <laughs> I like that one. I think I might have missed some jokes. If I didn't read your joke, just type it again. Let's keep it fresh. Sea cows still voting for the Gagan joke and the table of Jewish women joke. Uh, yeah, that's like the Seinfeld joke. Uh, Seinfeld tells a joke about... Uh, it, Seinfeld has a very similar joke about two Jewish businessmen uh, kvetching to each other. Yeah. I forget it. I really do think it's, I'm uh, having like a... The joke is, how's business going? He goes, it's great. I just added Sea Cow as a moderator. So I went from wanting to throw him out to making a mo him a moderator. <laughs> I'm Climbing fast in this industry, uh, Sea Cow. He would, Short King says, what was the woman's name that Donald Trump set free who couldn't carry a tune in a bucket but had a nice rack? Dolly Pardoned. 
I don't think she was, was pardoned. I think since she wasn't actually pardoned, it it doesn't quite make sense, so it's disqualified. Kano Bear said, "How's business? Good. I think that's the punchline from the Seinfeld joke, but I'm I'm missing something about the premise. I, I'm I have to apologize. It's the the joke is two Jewish guys are sitting at a table. One of them says, "So how's business going?" And the other guy goes, "Great." Yeah. Okay. That is. That is pretty funny. Yeah, you got it. Uh, there's a question here. Maybe somebody's putting a joke in the question box. Wit, Mr. Witt says, do you make mint-flavored kombucha for Samoans? You know what? That's funny he mentions that. Uh, I almost took out Samoan poppy the next day with, yeah, I make a raspberry mint kombucha. And as each person's passing by the table, I go like, hey, you want to try some kombucha? And in this particular instance, it's Samoan poppy. And he goes like, hey, wh what's in that real quick? I'm like, this is raspberry mint. He goes, no, thanks, man. And he goes, I'm going to pass. And I had not, not yet heard about how he had an allergic reaction wow. at the festival. So That's I'm like, true. oh, okay. I'm like, this. Uh, he's not interested in it. But, you know, then I come to find out, and I'm like, dude, I'm glad. I'm glad you asked because I almost, you know, I almost. Let's give you a second allergic reaction. So, Seacow had a question that's one of the jokes. He says, What is the banker's Bible? The Grabalonian Talmud. Uh, it's, uh, I don't know. It's a, it's a joke. I think it's supposed to be Babylonian Talmud, but he changed it to Grabalonian. What do you get when you cross a black guy and a Samoan guy? Samo niggas. <laughs> that was tried in Bear. Kano Bear was helping. I think I'm uh, I'm starting to miss a Trident Bear joke. Sea cow remembers my mint. Remembers my mint and julep. So I almost I gave Samoan Dan Dutch poppy says, a mint julep. I'm, That's I'm hilarious. Sorry. Right, say it again. I was just thinking I almost gave Samoan poppy, a mint julep. Right. Come get my mint julep, Samoan poppy. Dan Dutch says, I have a good joke. 9-11. That's a norm joke. Yeah. Nine Sam Fink says, Helen Keller walks into a bar, then a table, then a chair. Port Bear says Seinfeld had another Goy joke. A Gentile called his mother and said he wouldn't be there for dinner. She replied, okay. <laughs> I like that one. Samoan Poppy says, what's good, Bears? Okay, Samoan, we're having a joke contest. Um, you can win a, a non-compliant hat if you win. And Coffee Grounds Bear is the only judge. Yeah, I'm lucky that Simone Poppy didn't, you know, beat me to death with his wood club. It was that close. Dan Sachs says, someone said mint three times and he appears. That's pretty funny. What did Helen Keller do when she fell down a well? She screamed her hands off. <laughs> That's so stupid. That. Is that your joke, Trident, or is that an old one? I've heard that one. It's kind of close to that one with... Uh... Why does Helen Keller play the piano with one hand? And the punch on it is because she sings with the other. <laughs> oh, yeah. I've never heard that one. The band is talking about uh, Sea Cow and the, and the Star Trek trivia. The band that must be writing jokes and I'm missing them or something, but just write them again. If I miss a joke, just write it again. Trying to catch up here. Hold on. Sea Cow is admitting that his jokes suck. I I like when when Sea Cow tries to be funny. It's it's got its own charm. Sometimes 
the the lack of delivery can be the funny part. Well, see how writes jokes like a, like a computer geek, and that's got its own thing. You know, it's, we lost him. He just went away. So, I'd like to introduce my next guest. He's known in most most circles as the man with a plan, the man with an accent so weird you can never understand him, the man who tries to play, play it cool. Let's have a hand for Stuntman Bear. Woo! Yay! Big applause in the chat. And then I'll be up here if you need me. The bandit says, my jokes are bombing as usual, so don't worry about it. Let's see if he comes back. I don't know. Uh, Coffee Grounds Bears trying to get his get his shit together. I don't know. What's uh Let's find out what old. Let's find out what Stuntman's talking about. See if he's got anything to say. Where did, where did he go? Okay. Okay. Let's see. A million reasons not to do that. Um. As Americans are a lot more, seem a lot more open to it. Yeah, that wasn't three years. It was basically two. Blah, years. blah, 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 blah. This isn't the repeat show. Let's see if he's here. Let's see if he came back. Maybe his battery died or something. Okay. Hey, what was about car crash? Car chases. Uh, All right, well, what's your favorite? Sorry, we lost our guest Sometimes temporarily, but he'll be back. I, how I, outran a, I had a, a, a 1968 Peugeot 404. In Santa Fe, New Mexico. Which Let's try him again. Blah, blah, blah. All right. My bad. It's all an, an ad. I was scrolling through comments and up came an ad and it cut out my uh, feed. Crazy. Yeah. When you're not on Instagram for uh, three years, you, you lose all sense of how to operate an ad. Candor Bear says, it's a, yeah, well, welcome back. I, I tried to amuse the people with nonsense it didn't really work this would be it's my alleged by second appearance on hanging with bears that's right he's back on his second it's alleged by the adl that gas in hitler's in that the gas in hitler's chambers was produced from joe gagan's feet that's a joke that's a joke joe gagan i think that's one of those dirty jokes you don't like no smelly feet's not Gross. I mean, it's not. It's not sexual. So yeah, I'm just kidding. Van Dutch is waiting for the Star Trek jokes. I was talking to Sea Cow earlier this week. We were riffing about, uh, you know, how Owen was ro roasting him pretty good for like five, ten minutes. I was like, I wish I knew more about Star Trek to to riff about it, but but, but I got a couple in there. Why was Helen Keller a bad driver? She was a woman. I like that one. Thanks, you okay, I missed something here. It's ironic you win a non-compliant hat for being compliant. You mean like just playing the game as being compliant, I guess. That's a funny joke. Yeah, it's it's a good one. Everybody wants to make mint jokes about uh, Samoan poppy. I, I, I'm kind of getting sick of them personally, but everybody can have their own, own things. Are you having an allergic reaction to mint jokes? Am I? No, no. Uh, I'm just reading. I, I'm having to edit some of these because I can't read them. Like they have you know, like words, genitalia words in them and stuff. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm just killjoy. I want to get your opinion on this. I'll get back to the jokes in a minute. Um, you, have you heard Owen talk about how he can talk um, frankly about male, female stuff and he can be real gross, but he doesn't advise bears to do it because they're not, skilled like he is what do you think of that or do you recall him saying that uh i don't really recall him saying that uh 
I, I don't, but I'm guessing it has to do with like, uh, just being like, uh, you know, using like vulgarity and, uh, cause he, I guess he does talk about like really like overtly sexual things without it being pornographic or just kind of, you know, it, it's a fine line to where one person says it and it's funny and another guy will say it and you're like, this guy's kind of creepy. So is he warning people like, you know, he wouldn't advise it just because it can be, you know, some rough waters to try and navigate or. I think, yeah, I, especially in today's culture where, you know, yeah, I've seen a lot of people try to be uh, funny with sexual humor in the bear community and it usually falls flat. I think he's got a, a, a particular license to get away with it where other bears don't. That's just my, I think he's said something to that effect. Um, and I, I agree with it. I've seen a lot of people fall flat with their, with their sexual humor in this community. Yeah. It, I mean, it's, it's the same risk you take with any joke you tell. It's, you know, you gotta, you put yourself out on a ledge and, uh, you know, if it's not funny, then you don't get the laugh. And if it is funny, then you have a pretty good payoff but i guess with like especially with the sexual stuff owen talks about it, it can be well i don't want to say more graphic but uh i don't know not, not not a lot of people can do what he does so you know if they fall flat of that it, it's going to be a even you know it's going to be a longer fall and a harder hit without just sounding kind of you know, weird. I think a big difference is Owen is actually sending a message when he does it. He's actually trying to convince people to give up their hedonistic ways and however, whatever he's doing at that moment. Yeah. And so there's a, when there's an actual purpose behind it, it's, it's actually funny and necessary. Whereas the people in the bear community aren't necessarily the ones to be spreading that message i guess i don't you know does that make sense yeah, yeah it does uh yeah especially with uh kind of like what i was talking about earlier uh i mean i, I think it's the same reason why you know no one likes amy schumer's humor because every single punchline to her joke is you know my vagina right you're just like okay you, you just get beaten over the head with it and it's so, it's so saturated in so much of the comedic culture. Um, you know, you know, it's, it's kind of like an easy topic to tackle and you just get like real lazy with it. Uh, I, I just think a lot of people are tired of it. And uh, I, I think it's a right move to move away from, you know, like really overtly sexual humor. Like, think of how many, like, jokes there are in comedy specials. Like, they're all dick jokes. There's so many dick jokes. Uh, right. And then you, you know. Kano Bear uh, gave an example of a uh, one-line joke like Norm was talking about. Uh, how can you tell if a British guy is gay? <laughs> How's that? I. Uh, She's British. Oh. oh, okay. I guess I don't know enough British people. Yeah. Oh, Trident and Bear said, "What do you get when you cross a black man and a Mexican? Somebody, somebody who's too lazy to steal." Uh, uh, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna get caught up here. Flocal said that was enough English accent for today. I don't know what that meant. Oh, uh, Sam Fink said, I just invented a new word, plagiarism. <laughs> I like that one. That's funny. Seacow says, how do you know Picard? Oh, this is um, Star Trek humor. How do you know uh, Picard is gay? Earl Grey. Earl Grey? Hot. That's, somebody's got to explain that joke to me. Uh, one of my friend's sisters 
she thought of a joke when she was like four or five years old and it's one yeah. of my favorites and it, it's one of those it, it's so simple i like brevity and simplicity can be the key in a lot of jokes like, like the less fat you got on it is uh can be crucial sometimes but her joke is uh i'll ask you what did the one pig say to the other pig i don't know you pig <laughs> That's funny. I always like that one. Sea Cow says, why are Vulcans such great lovers? They can wiggle their ears. I'm lost. That, that's Cor Barely says, how many Seacow. psychiatrists does it take to change a light bulb? Only one, but it takes a long time, and the light bulb really has to want to change. That's an old one. That's funny. I never heard that one. The bandit bear said, "Sea cow is awesome." He took that roast like a man and laughed his head off. That was that was pretty classic. Yeah, I was rolling during that. That was great. Yeah, it was very, very funny. Then the bandit follows up with, "He's still gay for being a Star Trek fan, though." Why did everyone laugh when the Asian talked about? Oh, to, okay, I. Uh, it's some of these. Uh, Joe needs some Benadryl. I don't know what, what that means. <laughs> Joe interrupts the contest to tell a story. Try to embarrass, did not, not gonna quit. Puerto Rican joke, who is the busiest one at the Puerto Rican wedding? The one with the jumper cables again. Oh, the one with the jumper cables. <laughs> See, you might, might get that one. You're you're a car <laughs> guy. I don't understand that one. Seacow says, I don't like gross jokes anymore. I think a lot of us have kind of evolved to that. Jenny Deep Breath Bear says, what did I walk into? We're having a joke contest. If you got a good joke, uh... I like original ones better, just because many of them I've heard. Uh, but we're yeah we're having a contest. Whichever one I like best uh, wins one of Joe Gaggins' hats. And so far, I, I like Dan Sachs' joke the most. The uh, the waiter going up to the Jewish woman. I never heard that, that one. It, it was very funny. Seekow says Star Trek jokes are actually pretty tough to write. I'm finding out. That's pretty funny. I think uh, Seacow subscribes to the theory of um, if you write enough jokes, maybe, you know, one in 50 will be funny because he does a lot. He tries a lot. What did the, what did the racist chainsaw... <laughs> Uh, what did the uh, uh, Kano Bear says? What did the racist chainsaw sound like? Runnega, 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 runnega. I remember that one. Not a bot is talking about a Jew joke that he made. Oh, let's hear it. Um, I'm going back trying to find it. Oh, I write it again. Uh, not a bot. If if I missed it, I don't know. Sea level. Well, how did Spock save the day? He thought about it. That's just a joke about him being telepathic. Uh, Dan Sex says, uh, "I sad to say, I'm not a part of the Star Trek community. Right. I, I've, I wish I had a uh, more understanding of Star Trek." Kander says, "Kander Bear says, if the British won the Revolutionary War, would we have?" Eggs Benedict. <laughs> That's kind of dumb, but I like it. That's like a shower thought. A shower, yeah, shower thoughts. Make sure you wear your sandals. Oh, he, he orders Earl Grey tea all hot all the time. It can be interpreted as a man's name. Okay, I, yeah. That's back to that. All right. 
what is a joke only a Jew would get? One Gentile businessman asks another Gentile businessman, how's business? And the other businessman says, great. I guess he wasn't here when we did that one earlier. Those are all variations on it. Longbow joined. Uh, hey, Longbow, we're having a joke contest. Uh, doesn't have any rules, except I'm not going to read gross ones. Deep fried jokes. Don't let Joe Gagan tell jokes or fly planes. Not a snowball chance in hell of landing. That's true. Oh, no one wants your weed bath bombs had me rolling about J.J. Hempcrete. Yeah, that was great. What do you call an Indian Band-Aid? Apache. Uh -huh. J.J. Hempcrete's still here, but he's not giving us any jokes. How many stand-up comedians does it take to change a light bulb two one to change it and the other to ask how long has he been up there mm -hmm. that's funny oh this is an old one but it's it bears repeating how do you keep black kids from jumping on the bed put velcro on the ceiling that's an old one printer said i'm Reading chat from five minutes ago to be younger than all of us. That's true. It's, it makes me feel so young when I go back in time. Corbarely says, see Galaxy Quest for a funny appreciation of Trekkies. Great movie. I haven't seen Galaxy Quest. I know what it is. Oh, uh, not, not a bot's apologizing. Sam Fink, I'm... I'm going to ask, do you want me to really tell that? I'm going to give you one chance. Do you really think I should tell that gorilla joke? Are you? <laughs> Golly. Are you, are you laughing at the gorilla joke? Yes. Okay, I'll, That's I'll read it. If you laugh, I'm going to read it out loud for the people. <laughs> what happened when the black man looked up his family tree? A gorilla crapped in his face. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad that made you laugh. I've never heard that one. Uh, how many kids with, uh, this is a not a bot joke. How many kids with ADHD does it take to screw in a light bulb? Let's go ride bikes. I like jokes like that. Why did the rock band go to therapy? They had a lot of unresolved chord progressions. Is that a musical joke? Yeah, it's uh, it's a it's a thing in music where you should resolve the the chord back to the root chord. Okay, okay. So uh, a chord progression should be bookended with the same chord. Yeah, that's kind of the that's the that's the basis of resolution is bringing it back to the to the root chord. Yeah. Okay, so it doesn't sound like it's just hanging out there, unfinished. I got you. How do you, I don't know how to pronounce this word, uh, Ukrainian bear. What is a Haitian? I don't know. C-U-I-S-S-O-N. I don't know how to pronounce that. I've never seen that word before. Is it, what is Haitian cuisine? And then oh rubble. okay yeah you have a good uh, Ukrainian to English translator rubble what is this Haitian cuisine rubble <laughs> uh, man it's a good thing that Gagan is not a stand-up comedian yeah I've never tried stand-up I think I would be good but not in the traditional way I would just be up there like really dumb. I would try to take being dumb to new levels of stupidity. You could read like really funny encyclopedia entries. Just be no, I would, I would actually write, if I was going to do stand up, I would write out some material. Uh, 
<laughs> Samoan says we're already there. He tell Samoan's telling me not to do it. I guess everybody's already tapped out with all their jokes. Uh, so what did what did you like so far? You liked the Dan Sack joke that? Yeah, both of those, both of those, uh, that and the gorilla one. Both of them I'd never heard before, and they're just uh. Yeah, they're just really like in your face, and you know, I, I, I didn't see the punchlines coming. They're really good. I really, really like that Dan Sack joke. Ukrainian did a follow up to his Haitian joke. The joke could use some refining. One could say it's in ruins. Uh, what do you call a New Mexico gay bar? Grungy came to town. Got him. No, he says, What did you? Did you call it New Mexico gay bar and then something about my house or something? Uh, I should do stand up at the festival. That's true. <laughs> Did you hear my joke about paper? Oh, wait, it's terrible. T A E T E A R. A bull. A lot of puns. Need a telegram joke writer's room. Well, yes, we do. That'd be awesome. Do you want to turn your uh, roast prep into a joke writer? Just make it a general joke writer's room and then convert it back if the need arises. That's not a bad idea. Cool. That's not a bad idea. Okay. Everybody in here, uh, how, how do you want to go forward with that? Do you want to rename it and uh, invite everybody that's here, or what do you want to do? Um. I guess yeah. Whoever is interested, if the uh, especially if I get a definitive yes or I haven't heard back from COD yet, yeah, about what direction they want to go. But I love uh, I love joke writing, just like taking premises and uh, like the different elements involved in playing with their characteristics and tweaking them. Um, I love I love doing that, especially with uh, different writers in a room. Yeah. Like Bowler Bear and I talked about it a few times. Yeah. With like certain uh, sketch writing stuff. And uh, I I'm definitely interested in that, whether it's the roast room or just a separate room entirely. Oh, yeah. Start up a – start up a – well, I, I think you're the guy for this. Um, start one – start up a separate one. Everybody look for uh, – and then if you could remember as many people from this – chat as you can uh, go invite yeah. them all and you know put me in there put jackal bad in there and whoever wants to be in there can they type like, like uh f in the chat if they're interested in that and okay it's official maybe I, can, maybe I can see the uh some of the names roll by anybody that wants to be invited to coffee grounds bears joke writers room telegram group he's also informally or not officially yet putting together the idea for, cause he actually proposed it in a letter to Owen about doing a roast at the festival, but that's separate from the joke writers room now that we're oh, talking about. So yeah. type F in the chat. If you want to be invited to that group, we got yeah, C -C wobbly Sam Fink. I'm saying this verbally so we can catch it on the replay. Okay. Okay. C, yeah, C level level bear <laughs> says a, I don't know what, what that means. Dan sack says F uh, Wit, Mr. Wit says F, Core Barely, Dan Sack says N. I don't know what that means. That probably means I, no. I think they're spelling out a certain word. Oh, uh, okay. Though Dan, Dan Sack already said yes. The band says F, but pro properly only to read the jokes. Uh, Ted, you'll have some c contribution. Yeah, yeah, I'm just glad they stopped putting, being there, not a bot. I'm glad they stopped putting dollar signs in the chat. So, Jenny uh, Deep Breath Bear. Small but wise mama. Are all you guys on Telegram? If you're not on Telegram, make sure you get on Telegram. Poppin' Fresh wants to wants an N. I don't know what he's doing. Uh, oh, they're starting to sp spell out uh, the they're, N word. That's called uh, the uh, that's, that's called N walling. Yeah, it's a popular internet phenomena called N walling. Cool. Well, everybody uh, look for that on Telegram, and then we'll all go invite each other or whatever. So yeah. Yeah. I, That'd be a really fun room uh, to have different people uh, just, like, propose uh, premises or, you know, setups and then, 
like other people comment on it and see like different outcomes that they can take and what we could the, also do one of those um i don't know how to structure it in the chat but we could figure out a way to structure it where you do one of those stories where everybody writes one line like a mad libs yeah like a mad lib or a, there's a bunch of different names for it but it's a it's like a a trick from creative writing class from high school where each person writes a line to the story yeah it's like it's like the game of telephone but on methamphetamines like i don't know what direction this is going to go in printer bear says you hear about that the, that crazy cat that drank too much kombucha he acted fermented Oh, Wobbly says it might help with the cartoon to have a room like that. Yeah. The, uh, yeah, I've tried getting with some of the other bears to write sketches and usually it just doesn't work out. But if we have a room full of people that, you know, propose different ideas and just keep, keep well, working it could off just of, be, It could just be fun, too. It would just be fun to hang out. Yeah, it would be fun. Uh, Tikal says you can do threads in Telegram. So we'll figure that out. Yeah, we'll get that together. It's a it's a fun pro process just to yeah, see what different directions you can go and make it like kind of what you're saying, like kind of like mathematically and structurally sound, right? right. But also implement those uh, those parts of exaggeration and it's a uh, yeah, I love, love it. I, I think. I think Samoan would prefer it if I didn't hang out in there very much. Maybe we maybe we can make a Joe Gag in the moderator. No, I don't want to be I don't want to be any moderator. I'll just I'll just hang out a little bit. I got a lot going on, you know. We can but, uh, uh we could have we can uh write all the jokes in there. We we could have you recite them. No, I think Samoan yeah. doesn't want me to do that either. Seacoff says he wrote a sketch last night. Going to mention it to BB. See what he thinks should be done. Cool. Well, you're one of the you're one of the people that physically hangs out with Owen. So Seacoff is our connection to the man. It's a sketch where he uh, teleports all of his merch to Bears mailboxes, Star Trek style. Say it again. I said it's a sketch where Seacoff teleports all of his merch to Bears. <laughs> Mailboxes, Star Trek style. See, Cal, can you give us a little, just a little hint about what it's about? Beam me up, merch. <laughs> Sleep deprived. So what do you have on your uh, agenda for 2024? What like what are you what are your goals? What are you what are you trying to do? Yeah. Yeah, uh my fiance and I were actually writing those out the other night. We were writing out our reflections for the past year and what we want to do for the next year. Uh and it became a long list, but what we have down is to extend our gardens. Uh this past year I was able to put in two pretty good sized garden beds uh so we want to extend the gardens uh we we're talking about how we can extend her small business and my kombucha business you know the the best ways to properly expand that do you way. want to shout out her business or do you, are you preferring to keep that private uh yeah i'll shout it out it's pretty centralized to tennessee though okay. it's uh she's a photographer so she'll do uh, family photos. Uh, she gets a lot of clientele wanting pet portraits because uh, she works with a lot of animals. But uh, yeah, like family photos, holiday photos. Um, yeah, she's a well. Now that you now that you've brought it up, I've seen the photos, and she's she's very good. She is. Uh, but it's called Potts's Pixel, uh, P O T T S, and then Pixels. Cool. Yeah. 
it's a uh, yeah, she's really good at what she does and you know she gets gives a pretty fair price especially for what other photographers charge it's it's i can't believe it sometimes what like for weddings wedding photos if you need wedding photos done around uh tennessee or kentucky she's, she's uh you would get a, a really good product with her uh what somebody was to... talking about having a phaser in their hand and i i have a phaser in my hand it's pretty good that's really dumb but uh somebody brought it up it kind of resembles more or the tech you see in Star Wars, where it's, it's very futuristic, but uh, this a lot of the this tech was you see probably is kind of designed in 70, 1974 or so. So I've been as Phase Tone Two PT seven oh seven. So this would have been in the Yippy area of Phaser, just post Yippy. Yes, I think some Japanese Yippies designed some former Yippies designed it. I think they call them Nippies. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, is Candor Bear still here? Where's his jokes? Klingons are the ones with the weird faces, right? No, that's Joe Gagan. <laughs> that's that's my. My Joe Gagan joke for the night. That's funny. Trout Whisperer said pedal jokes are distorted. I like that joke. Kander went to sleep. Did he really announce that he was leaving? All right, last call for jokes. We got to keep trying here. Anybody, anybody got any new ones that they've thought up? Sea Cow has announced that the story he was writing had to do with solving the bunny problem at, at Amy and Owen's house. Hmm. Is it, I wonder if it has anything to do with the house bunny that Owen was in. Oh God, he should do the house bunny too, but it's just Owen taking out all, all the rabbits with his 22. <laughs> that that is funny. funny. That'd be a pretty wild script. Uh, oh, Nautabot says, if we're still, in, still doing jokes, I got a good one about a pencil, but I must warn you, it's pointless. Hmm. There are four lights. There are 33 lights. I don't get it. I don't know. I've lost, I've lost the script somewhere. I think that's a, a 1984 joke. Oh, okay, gotcha. Where the Dan Sack, I had that same visual in my head. Owen should wear his outfit from the movie while shooting bunnies. Yeah, I was try trying to figure out a way to merge those two those two movies. Well, you always well, wasn't it a vest? He was wearing a vest in the movie, right? What isn't he wearing a vest in the uh, opening sequence of his stream, where he's like walking down his driveway, throwing up his hands? That was something that uh, Camacho filmed, yeah. Yeah. Maybe he's, it's, uh, doing, he's doing like some something, you know, like getting, you know, like shit talking called? before a fight <laughs> or something. I think he was. They were. They, the premise was kind of like those '90s music videos where guys would look all tough with the vest and, yeah, you know, making making signs and yeah, they're stomping the yard, yo. The Ukrainian bear has a joke. A frog was walking down the beach and met an alligator. The alligator said, why are you so green and ugly? Frog replied, I'm not green and ugly. I'm actually white and fluffy. I'm just sick today. I don't get it. Oh, is it because he's feeling froggy? I don't know. No, it's just, I, it, I don't know. Ukrainian, I don't know. You got to try, try harder. Be more funny. Do you guys ever hear that joke about pizza? It's pretty cheesy. The bandit says House Bunny 2 would be hilarious. Yeah, I just the, I think something could be built huh. on that. Sea Cow is lamenting the fact that people wanted Star Trek humor, but they don't know Star Trek, so nobody's going to get the jokes. I think if we all go Four to a convention, a, we might okay. pick a thing or two. 
I'm not going to read your comment, Dan, but I enjoyed it. 33 lights. Oh, that's. Uh, oh. Fink. What is. Is Fink's. I, I Fink's isn't in here, is he? Yeah, he's in here. He says season six, episode four, minute 32. When did Finksburg get in here? Oh, Sam Fink. Never mind. Oh, uh, sorry. You know what? I mix up those names all the time. That's my bad. I don't, but uh, that's just because the Finks is at the front of the name. Yeah. <laughs> Sleep deprived. Going where no joke has gone before. Oh, that's simple and dumb, but I liked it. Are you able to talk about what your day job is? Yeah, yeah. The uh, well, for the past two years, um, well, yeah, the past two years I've been working for a roofing company that my good friends uh, work at. Uh, I was before this cutting meat. I was a meat cutter at Whole Foods, okay. but this would have been during COVID, and it was just. It was really interesting how, you know, I would go into that world and uh, how Owen would perfectly describe how to, like, rebuke that world. It it was a uh, a crazy place. It, it really is a place full of uh, pretty, I don't know, desperate people. A lot of feel, fearful people there at Whole Foods. Right. So, um yeah, with Owen's influence, I got more into the trades. Uh, cool. I was a meat cutter, but then I moved more to construction. And I like it a whole, whole lot. I've always enjoyed working with my hands and actually uh, creating stuff. So, And the uh, construction pays a lot more. So I've been uh, you know, working in the outdoors for the past two and a half years. Just uh, – putting roofs on military buildings on a uh, Fort Campbell. Oh, oh cool. What's yeah. the material? It's uh, uh it's basically a sheet metal. It's uh like uh, roof panels. The majority of the work we do is roof panels for military buildings, but we'll also get into other kinds of sheet metal like, you know, doors and windows and wall panels, uh gutters, downspouts, uh and just other aspects of sheet metal on the uh, that decorate the building, uh, the outsides of buildings. But yeah, cool. That, that'd be the majority of it. How many guys in the company? I, I would say it fluctuates between fifteen and twenty. Cool. It's a uh, it's a relatively small smaller company, and and uh, we. The company does have a, an edge with the market there just because most companies will pre-order their metal and have it shipped to the location. But we have a machine that takes coils of metal and we can custom make whatever length of metal we need. So we save on a lot of uh, cost of like shipping and just uh, instead of, you know, relying on a distributor to deliver metal we just form it ourselves to whatever length and put on the building right there and it's the only company to do roofing on fort campbell so it we really have our work set out for us that's cool and, yeah see Kyle wanted to know did you ever get a jewish woman's request right at whole foods um i would say yeah I, I can't think of too many, many instances where, like, a very noticeably Jewish person that, you know, had any real problems with uh, anything they were ordering. They would order a lot of lamb. I know they'd order a lot of lamb. That was kind of their thing. They're like, oh, they're going to get a lamb bone. One of their holidays, like, one week per year, we'd get a big box of lamb bones, like the femur. And then we'd have to take it and kind of nick it 
with the saw on both ends because one of their traditions is to like break a lamb bone. Ah, like you must break, break the lamb. And so we'll, you had to give them a cheat. You had to give them a starter starter cut. Yeah, yeah. I suppose we did. Yeah, we had to kind of give them a a little fault line to, you know. I did it. I'm a strong boy. That's funny. Yeah. When I make broth, sometimes I like to really crack the bones to get, uh, and it's hard, you know, chicken bones or whatever. But even, even chicken bones, oh, is, you I'm gotta not, whack really I'm hard to get to get off. Though I think they would just snap it, and they're like, "Okay, we did the." I don't want to say ritual, but from what was described to me, it, like it's part of a, a ceremony. Like they break a lamb bone, and they're like, "I don't know." We'd have to get someone in the chat that knows more about it i'll just cut the dang thing but yeah some people have been commenting but i have to read a ukrainian bear joke he says ever tried fishing without a hook it's really hard i had to do the visual on the really it's really hard i think you could be a great stand-up joe gaggin I doubt that was good about it i don't uh oh try to bear misspelled something okay Kano Bear says, uh, are we going to have live chickens? Uh, that is one of the goals for 2024, uh, my fiance and I. We actually wanted to do chickens this past year, but we had our son arrive in mid-May, and uh, we thought, well, we put the gardens up, and we have a new child, and we just figured the chickens would be too much of a you know, another project to add on. So, so we had to put the damper on that and chickens is hopefully what we get into this year. Cool. Cool. How many kids do you have? We have just one, one, one boy. One, I one named, boy. How old? He is eight months as of, no, he'll be eight months in seven days. So in one week, he'll be eight months. But Kano Bear was impersonating a Jewish request at Whole Foods. What did I miss? There really aren't too many Jewish people in Nashville, to be quite honest. Not not that I could really notice. You know, it's not, not like New Jersey or New York or anything. I mean, you got some, but it's... Kano Bear's telling himself jokes in a Jewish accent. Uh, and he says, do you have any live chickens? He's asking the deli guy. She's asking the deli guy. Oh, uh, whoops. Sleep so, Deprived says, my mom uses the back of her knife to crack open chicken bones. Sounds like gunshots. Yeah, I use the back of the knife too. Viet, Viet man. I, Vietnam, man. Wow, well, that's crazy. Yeah. The Thin chicken. I, yeah, I don't know that whole tradition. Seacow says being a dad is great. Yeah. Yeah, my whole attitude was, I'm like, oh, that sounds weird. And I just left it at that. I'm like, here's your bone. It was a free bone, too. Like, here's your free bone. We threw him a bone, literally. Sea level is um, seconding what Seacow said about being a father is the best. I've been having some great uh, conversations with my son who's expecting his first child in June with his wife uh, for years and years up until very recently he was he and he and his wife both would say they were never going to have kids yeah but I never gave up you know telling them they shouldn't miss out you know I, I was really persistent I'm not saying that, that I was the sole reason but I just want people to know that I definitely put in my vote with them that they should have kids and now that he's now that they're expecting he's completely got a totally different outlook on it and we've been having some great conversations yeah congratulations with that i from what i picked up yeah that's basically what you're saying like you're wanting grandkids for a long time and you finally is he about to have one is that right yeah they're they're due in june that's awesome yeah congratulations yeah. It's, yeah, it's uh, awesome. It's definitely uh, uh, completely changed my life. It's it is uh, amazing having kids. Just your capacity for love does just grow so much. 
it's a more resound love, kind of like, like a uh, kind of like a big bell going off. It just has a resonance to it. And right. when I met my fiance, uh, like I said, she works with a lot of animals, and her attitude was more it's like, "Oh, I'm never having kids." She goes, "Like I have dogs." I'm like, "Oh my god!" I'm like, I've noticed that. Well, I, it's been talked about a lot, but. I think the women who work um, animals is is one aspect of it, but yeah, I've also noticed that women who work in daycares or work with young kids, that kind of like fulfills their need to take care of kids, so they don't they don't want to do it at their own house or something. Yeah. Or the, I don't know. And you, one thing that kind of drove me, one of the most bizarre experiences I've had was. One of her coworkers, she goes, "Oh, we're gonna have a, a birthday party at our house. It's you know, it was her dog Kelso. Who goes, it's gonna be her birthday or his birthday, and so everyone's bringing their dogs over, and they're putting, they have cakes and they have the dogs open up presents, and they're putting party hats on them, and I'm like looking around like the only sane person in the room. I'm going, I don't know what." situation this is it seemed like an episode of the twilight zone i'm like i just kept thinking this is a displaced uh notion that you need to have and take care of children but they're putting it in the you know how they, they always put the sin in the chicken well they're putting their love in a dog right and some of the other attitudes or things that uh my fiance would tell me she goes like you know how much poop we have to clean up i'd say we have three dogs you know how much poop you already clean up right like, and there's birthday parties and like you buy them presents and you have they schedule play dates and like you like get special food for them i said this is this is having a, a kid but it's i'm like trust me i'm like having kids is going to be like having a puppy but it stays like a puppy forever well not forever but for much longer and it's it's going to be much better. I said, I promise you. It's awesome. Good for you. Yeah. Yeah. I like seeing those turnarounds. There have been a lot of stories in the bear community of people who never thought they'd be married, never thought they'd have kids, yeah. and they just they had a transformation. It's awesome. Yeah. I definitely saw that in my fiance, and it's uh, I'm so happy it happened. Uh, it's she absolutely loves our son. It's she has all the love for him that I knew she had. I'm like, I know she's gonna love this. But uh Yeah. You know, people you know, there's a lot of influences going the other way, sadly. And it's true. Well, and that's the that's the thing Owen says over and over again, is it's up to the guy to create such a level of stability. That, yeah. I mean, so many women are looking for a guy to actually lead, yeah. to have that stability. So the guy actually raises his game. Yeah. Yep. And all That's of a sudden, it. she sees possibilities that she hadn't considered before because she never had been with a guy that that made her feel like it was actually safe to have kids. Yeah. That 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 blew my mind when Owen said it because I it had never been spelled out to me quite that way. But I want that. That's it. I, I was like that. He cracked the code, at least for me. And a lot of times what I think women experience uh, when they have a nice, stable, you know, reliable, responsible man, it's not always conscious for them, too. They don't have the thought like, OK, I'm with a stable man. I want to have kids with them. It's just more a, a hormone <laughs> reaction. It's, an, it's there. just instinctive. Yeah. In Instinctive, yeah, that's another good word to describe it. And it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's been a blessing. And uh, I'm really happy that you got that coming your way too, having some grandkids. Yeah, I'll start with one. My older son and his wife don't seem like they're headed that way. They're, they're kind of in that camp where they, they're kind of, they don't. They're atheists, I guess, and they think, you know, this isn't a world to bring a kid into, all those usual arguments, and they're in their mid-30s now, yeah. so they're, you know, they're, you know, 
Yeah, I get it. Yeah, I was there at one point too. I I think that one thing you they may have going for them is they would pr- probably see how your one son who's expecting and his wife there, they're going to see how awesome it is. Yeah. The benefits of it in a, in a fashion that they can easily relate to their own family. Uh, and, and they'll go, you know, it, it just may make them reconsider. That's another thing I told Kinsey uh, before we had kids. I'm like, yeah, I really want to have kids someday. Like, I think it'd be really fun. And she would re- respond with like kids are gross and annoying which is true like anytime you're in a food court at a mall or like the airplane like they're they're kind of annoying like they scream and i'm like first of all it's not your kid so it's kind of natural that you're going to have that reaction to someone else's kid and uh you know some of the other family members in our lives they're a bit more uh, like they like to party a lot and their, their children have a more like hyperactive tendency. Right. It was like, do you know how those kids act? I'm like, I'm like, th- that's true. But they're almost like a representation of the parents. That's right. Like, I, like if we were to have kids, they would resemble more of our characteristics. You know, I, I would think, but right. I'm like, so if you have like a, if we have a kid that's closer to, you know, our characteristics and personalities, like you're not going to mind like so much the poopy diapers and uh, some of the bad behavior that might come along. Cause it's going to be your kid. It's, you're not going to react to it the same, you know, it's just instinctual. Yep. At some that makes point. sense. Uh, yeah. It's, it's, it's never a good idea to base your decisions on what some shitty people are doing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, it's Dan Sachs says my, my company that designs car seats is now starting a cat and dog car seat line because of these fur bastards. That's hilarious. I didn't know that. It's crazy. I guess the good thing about that is if you already have a lot of dog hair on you or in your car, it could help conceal it a bit better. Everybody's listing oh. off all the things that dogs can't do that your dog will never tell you i love you dad your dog will never drop a hard end in public like a child will dan sack i think he's trying to win that hat yeah <clears throat> see cows waiting for the cream of wheat guy i'm not sure i think that was a black that guy that was handing you cream of wheat. I don't. I don't remember the cream of wheat guy. Bear for all seasons wants to have enough kids to start a cartel. That's cool. I like this punchline. I don't know the joke. Um, Dan Sack said to Seacow, she was pretty ugly. No one ever called her hot tub. I don't. That's funny, but sack of Juwea. <laughs> There's a lot of good punchlines in here, uh, but I don't know the jokes. Hey, uh, Taylor Bear, uh, we're having a joke contest, but everybody's losing. If I had to make a call now, I say Dan Sack wins. Okay, Dan Sack. Well, uh, well, well, it's not over yet. Let's let's just let them keep trying. Although that that great. The gorilla one is a close second. That one made who, me laugh. Who did that one? Sam Fink? I'm not sure. Uh, I think it was uh, Sam Fink. The uh, chat, Whoever did the gorilla I, joke, uh, I think it was Sam Fink, but just give me a confirmation. Uh, okay. Uh, Taylor Bear says, my daughter and I were just watching Star Wars, and she looks at me and just says, allegedly. <laughs> That's pretty funny. I like when the when the kids are starting to tell the tell the bear jokes. The Ukrainian bear said, what kind of cars do sheep drive? Lambos. I mispronounced lamb, but that's. Oh, now Sam Fink is conceding to. Uh, Dan Sack, he thinks Dan's joke was better, but 
You're not the judge, Sam Fink. Bud Bear's here. Hey, Bud Bear, you got any good jokes? Uh, that was the bandit, or I'm sorry, Dan Sack that did the Jew women joke. Or was there another Jew women joke I'm forgetting? Bud is printing out his jokes now. That's pretty funny. Oh, we got the 239 bean joke again. Bear for all seasons wasn't here. When making beans, you only use 239 because uh, if you had one more, it'll be 240. That was told as an Irish joke before, I think. Oh, yeah, the uh, chili bean joke. Yeah. So you're using uh, Wi-Fi at the Walmart parking lot? Is that what you're saying? No, nah, just sell data. Oh, you're. Oh, okay, cool. I may have to wrap it up pretty soon, though. What time zone are you in? Uh, I actually don't know the name of the time zone, to be honest, but it's ten twenty-two my time. You're in Central, then. Yeah. Okay, so uh, who's the winner of the joke contest? I'll have to give it to Dan Sack. That's cool. Well, it was great having you on. And uh, so just in case, like anybody that joined later, uh, Coffee Grounds Bear is going to start a group on Telegram that's called, what's, what is it? It's going to be for uh, joke writers. Just everybody can get in on writing jokes, uh, you know, adding ideas, adding punchlines, adding premises, whatever, whatever joke writing entails is going to be in there. Uh, so look for it. Uh, any recent people that showed up, if you want to be in there, type F in the chat and we'll try to remember your name. It's been a lot of fun being on here. I'm glad you had me on. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad we did it. Um, it's been a long time coming and uh, you've been a bear a long time and everybody appreciates you being part of the community and your kombucha. Yeah. Look forward to hanging out with you at the festival. Yeah, me, it's cool. Me too. Right on. Pop and Fresh has just started to write letters. Sea Cow is writing letters. They're running a train in the chat. I don't mean that in the way we used to say it. Okay, never mind. Mr. Witt, good night, Mr. Witt. Thanks for being here. I want to uh, appreciate everybody. Thanks to everybody that came. It's awesome. Not a bot. Said good show tonight. Yeah, well, I messed it up a lot, but like usual. I thought you did great. Uh, I'm forgetting. Who does Finks have on tomorrow? There's another Hang With Bears tomorrow night. Finks and... Oh. I got to look it up. I totally blanked on it. Oh, well. Go look at the schedule. I apologize for not remembering. I want to thank Seacow for letting, for him letting me pin all of his comments. Hang with Bears 2024, the year of ownership. Right on. I want to say good night, everybody, and uh, thanks for being here, and we'll see you on the next Hang with Bears. Yeah, it, was, it was good hanging. Hope to be here again. All right. Thank you. Later.